Hey there YouTube, Travis here. As you can see, I am tearing some of the wooden lath off of the ceiling. Uh, this is definitely one of the grossest things I've ever done. There is just, again, a hundred years of ash, insects, all sorts of stuff that's rained down from the roof. It is pretty gross. And uh, in addition, when you're pulling the lath off the ceiling, you've got your neck tilted back at an angle. It's just not work that you can do uh, all in one shot. So you gotta take breaks, you gotta pace yourself with this, and I just can't emphasize enough how gross this is. Uh, this is a view up uh, in the area right at the edge of the roof, but it's, it's still pretty gross all the way around. Now, as I'm doing this work, I should have my eye protection and my respirator on. I did for most of this job. This is just a bad example. Now we're getting to a point where this electrical box, this junction box was uncovered, but there's no wires going to it. All the wires for this room go up into the attic. I actually can't access that part of the attic. Um, the light, everything else just goes, goes up there. There's no, no wires going to this box. And when we take a closer look at it, it's full of plaster or it's full of uh, drywall mud or something, the layer of plaster and drywall completely covered it up. I had no idea it was here. Maybe it served a purpose when this room had a door that was over here. Um, the original setup of the bathroom, who knows? And now all the lath is off of the ceiling and the walls. We vacuumed up to make it nice and clean in here. We can start on the floor. We've already taken off a layer of linoleum and plywood. Now it's time for the next layer. But before we do that, this is the wiring for the fan, which was part of the structure for the front of the shower area. Um, I wasn't sure how I was gonna get this wire out without nicking it, but uh, what I ended up doing was just putting a little notch in the top of the wood with the saw. And then I went ahead and got a pry bar and I simply hit the wood and I split it open and I was able to get the wire out that way. That was a trick I found from another YouTuber. So after removing the yellow linoleum and a layer of plywood, there's this stuff underneath. I initially thought this was two layers of additional linoleum floor, but this orange stuff is, is probably like the underlayment. Um, and this floral pattern is, is probably your, your old linoleum. Uh, and coming over here by the front of the, the shower enclosure and the toilet, this linoleum floor and underlayment, there's just Nothing left of this stuff. It is just coming up in chunks. It is is pretty bad. Um, even the wood, there's a layer of hardwood underneath it that is that is pretty bad also. Um, but it's it's barely even held down. It just it just comes right up with barely any pressure. So as you can see, we've got the, the yellow linoleum up. And now we're down to um, now we're down to the, the layers underneath. One interesting thing we can see originally there was a hot and a cold water line and probably a drain right there um, for a older tub enclosure before this stuff was put in. This copper is obviously a little newer than just about everything else. I imagine there was probably an old drum style trap under there. Someone came through a couple years ago, put in a P-trap and they put in this copper uh, and that PEX is even newer um, from 2015. Um, we're just gonna keep working on this floor. I cannot tell you how moldy and, and nasty this stuff is. It is just coming coming right up. I'm in full biohazard gear here with Tyvek suit and, and respirator. And as we can see, we've got that, that floral exposed now. Um, we're just getting so many layers of this stuff off of here. It is, it is pretty crazy um, how, how far we're going. And again, this stuff is just so, so, so rotten. I wouldn't stand on this at all. So we've got nearly all the linoleum up and now it's just this layer of hardwood. The stuff under the tub is pretty easy, but this stuff that is not is really hard. It's got tons of nails in it. It's just really slow going. Um, we're getting to where the vent was. The hole is much bigger. There was some scrap quarter inch plywood that was here. Um, see a nice little gap in the, the duct work there. Um, and now we're finally, finally done. And what is this underneath that hardwood floor? It's a newspaper. Let's, uh, let's take a closer look at this. So this is a single page of a newspaper and it's pretty old. This is from 1913. Remember this house was built in 1910 and it is the Women's Home Weekly newspaper. 
Uh, it's a newspaper which I can't find a whole heck of a lot of information about other than it existed. Um, you can look up Martha Dean Trueheart as the editor and find some references that this newspaper existed around this time. Uh, but so far, finding an online version that's been scanned somewhere, I've, I've come up empty. Uh, there's some pretty neat stuff in here, though. On the back side of this newspaper, there's actually a contest to win a Ford Model T. Be it that this newspaper is 1913, they say that the car is worth uh, $600. It's super interesting. 1913 was the first year that the assembly line for the Ford Model T was actually a moving one. That allowed Henry Ford to lower his prices. Uh, around 1909, they were an $800 car. Uh, so this all fits. It seems like they really wanted you to enter this contest. It's referenced a, a little lower in the newspaper here as well. Um, super interesting. It has its own classified section with all sorts of interesting old timey advertisements for like a voice thrower, which I guess you could send off for um, job postings for being a detective, uh, scented postcards, uh, and it's on the very bottom for men only six spicy real eye openers, some art postals whatever that is. But the real eye catchers on the front page, um, they make a reference here to the funeral of Joaquin Miller. Uh, he was a poet. He lived into his 70s. Uh, and if you look him up today, most of the search results you get are for the uh, Joaquin Miller Park, which is located uh, just outside of Oakland, uh, to the east of Oakland. Uh, but in this newspaper, he had just passed away. And they have one of his poems here. It's actually his very last poem he ever wrote, very shortly before he died. Um, I'd like to read that now. So published here is the poem At Final Parting by Joaquin Miller. Could I but teach man to believe? Could I but make small men to grow? To break frail spider webs that weave about their thews and bind them low? Could I but sing one song and lay, grim doubt, I then could go my way in tranquil silence, glad, serene, and satisfied from off the scene. But ah, this disbelief, this doubt, this doubt of God, this doubt of good, the damned spot will not out. Couldst learn to know one little flower, its perfume, perfect form, and hue. Yea, wouldst thou have one perfect hour of all the year that come to you? Then grow as God hath planted, grow a lordy oak or daisy low, as he hath set his garden be, just what thou art, or grass, or tree. Thy treasures up in heaven laid, await thy sure ascending soul, life after life, be not afraid. I consider this poem to be a reflective and humbling and also hopeful poem. So let's get back to this demo. Looking at this stud, it's actually sitting on top of the hardwood. Um, that's not the case with any other stud in this room. That really leads me to believe that this was some sort of door that was was enclosed later and that this door is, is almost certainly newer. There's the rest of our newspaper ready to, to come up. This is an earlier shot. Um, but almost all the hardwood is up. One other really weird thing I noticed is that this door, the structure for it, rather than being a header that I've normally seen, it looks like the door frame is actually what's, what's uh, going up to the stud right there. Super weird. Almost as weird as what we see here. These look like little plates of tin, maybe, uh, and they were stapled to the underside of the hardwood floor. They were stuck there anyway to cover up two holes. And I'm guessing these were old holes where water lines went, and these plates are super strange. I haven't seen anything like this before, but I do know that there's another one elsewhere in the house. Um, up along in the front of the house, there's one of those plates that sits uh, really up near the front, so I'm, I'm wondering if that's just a old-timey way of covering something up. In addition, there's this plate of tin or steel or something. It's really thin, um, but it was covering up a third hole as I pull out the rest of that hardwood. Though this one, the hole actually goes through the hardwood and the, the subfloor. So we're finally down to the last layer, these boards that are the, the final subfloor. And we get to expose my plumbing, which I've only ever seen from underneath. My coat hanger style contraption holding the vent uh, to the toilet drain or the toilet drain to the 
vent, I'm not sure. Looks like some sort of oakum repair on the outside of the cast, which is weird. And we have our, I'm guessing this is lead or that that cardboard style pipe that was popular back then because it's kind of flaking off near the top. But it has this offshoot and I never was really sure what this was. My guess was a vent at one time because of the notch cut out in the wood there, but it's that's been capped off. Um, I'm, I'm guessing that was a, a vent at one time, but I guess it's no longer needed or was determined it was no longer needed. Um, either way, there's there's definitely some funny business going on there. For our water lines, when we connected the galvanized to the copper that was done probably in the 70s, um, they actually looked like they used the right type of fitting to transition from one to the other. I can't say that's the case with some other repairs in the house. Um, and we see some modern ABS grafted to, to the drains there uh, for the, the shower. So all those boards have been pulled up. This is really the kind of the end game here with, with this demo. Um, looks like we've got at least a 24 inch span uh, for these floor joists. Um, so whatever we're gonna put on top is gonna be, have to be some, some pretty thick subfloor when this goes back together. But one thing I found really interesting is that almost all of this plumbing is the original galvanized water lines with the exception of this little bit by the shower here. Um, that's, that's pretty wild. Um, I assume that because this was the exposed crawl space, there would have been freezing pipes and there would have been some repairs, but no, this is really all original. And there's this water line over here, which is suspiciously close to where those three holes were. So I, I really think that there may have been some sort of, some sort of sink over here, or, or this went into the basement for, for some reason. There's that, that hole right there taking it, it back out. Who knows though? Um, I, I really think that there was this something here. There's our dryer vent that goes right under my legs, right there. Um, but man, that's such a mystery. We'll take a look at that from the underside in just a moment. Now, I'm really just going to be vacuuming and cleaning and, and trying to get all this, this, this dust out of the crawl space. Um, for, for this project, I'm bringing in a, a master plumber to repipe my whole house with PEX. So all of this will go away. Um, a little bit of drain work to, uh, to move the drains around in this bathroom to support a better layout. Um, but we're not changing a whole heck of a lot of that. All in all, this demo project, I expected to do it in a day or two. Um, it took way longer than that. Working little bits in the evenings after work and, and on the weekends. Um, I didn't expect there to be that many layers in here, but that's just one of the realities of, of owning an older house. I will uh, post an update in here when this is back together, but for now, let's go ahead and just take a quick look at what this looks like underneath. So of course, we're back down in the basement and right underneath here, we can see where, again, that's where that water, cold water line used to go. Maybe a hot water line too, if there was a sink in that bathroom. But some other super interesting things. Uh, one thing that, you know, the people who are plumbers and electricians will notice and general contractors is there are some serious chunks that were taken out of my floor joists here. That one might not be so bad. But what's weird is this side of the house. So we have this line right here. This is our cold water line. It comes from the city right there. And for so one goes to the water heater and one goes to some of the uh, sinks, there's this, and it really looks like this was capped at one point. Over here in the basement, we can see, again, just uh, some big chunks, and someone came by later and sistered a 2 by 4 right there, but they continue. This one is, is really not great either, uh, but there was something that was running up here, and, uh, you know, again, I'll never know. I, I wondered at one point in time if there was a washing machine set up over here because this is very clearly a dryer vent and that just goes all the way out to the wall um but it would be really weird to have a, a, a dryer right here because this is the 110 year old octopus furnace which is original to the house so that continues to be a mystery to me for now in addition we've got one more kind of unexplained thing in this house. And these cabinets here, what we've got hiding is some sort of drain. And I've had some theories on this. You know, it it 
it goes out into the wall here, which is today, you know, just this back stairwell. But I'm thinking that at one time that could have been a drain for the yard, maybe. Um, there's some evidence that there's at least one drain left that goes down into the ground. And then this was a drain that connected under the slab here and then caught this uh, kitchen stack drain and, and took rainwater out, but that, that fell out of favor. Um, and this thing was, was just capped off. Or it could have been that there was some sort of uh, sink here or upstairs. I'm not sure though. Um, there's also some pretty serious evidence that for our washer and dryer here that there was a concrete sink uh, here. And, and when I moved in, there was the remains of the concrete sink uh, that were not thrown away, that were down here in the basement. So there there was a obviously a concrete sink here, and there's our original plumbing fixtures for it. So again, just a, another couple, couple mysteries about this house that uh, maybe I'll find out more about them the longer I live here, or maybe not. Okay there, YouTube. Well, the demo is done. Now the fun part begins, putting in a proper modern bathroom upstairs. Until next time.